welcome all of you for the Friday webinar series. Uh, today, continuing with the contemporary issues, we have uh, Professor Kundu and uh, Dr. Surjit Bhalla discussing, uh, Surjit Bhalla sir being in the chair, and Professor Kundu discussing about the multidimensional poverty. Uh, both the speakers are so well known across the country and to our uh, participants. So I'm taking the liberty because of shortage of time, uh, Dr. Surjit Bhalla has to leave for the airport at 5.15. And therefore, we'll have to do the bulk of discussion before that. And only after that, I'll take over uh, chairing the session. But uh, because I would like the major discussion to take place before that, skipping the discussion about the bios, going straight forward to Professor Kundu to start his presentation, please. Uh, Dr. Singh, which means that I should, uh, the, my presentation should be over by five so that we can at least hear Sujit for 15 minutes. Is that all right? Yeah, I think but, that would uh, be okay. Can, we, can you stay after that for question answers? Because we would certainly like to hear you and also the others. If you can stay sure. in by another 15 minutes. Sure. So right. I think okay. that is fine. Uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Sujit Singh Bhalla is in the chair. So I think, I hope, sir, that's okay. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, perfect, sir. So without much ado, Amitabh, the floor is yours. Thank you. It's honor and privilege for me to be part of this Agro web webinar series. Uh, and I'm grateful to Charan for this opportunity. Particularly, I'm happy that Sujit is chairing because, you know, he had raised before a month and a half certain, you know, trend he has mentioned about certain trends of poverty reduction at different periods, which raised some issues of methodology. Uh, in fact, uh, Sujit, by using the results of the global the multidimensional poverty report largely, had clearly concluded that the reduction in poverty has been much faster during the NDA period of the NDA government than the earlier period. There are some methodological issues that were raised by John Reyes, and I thought that these issues can easily be settled. And I thought what we should be discussing is that what is the possibility of using the multidimensional poverty as an active tool of planned intervention in this country? Are there methodological issues which are serious here, are much more serious than going by consumption expenditure on in income data. We can look at that possibility because I remember Arvind Virman in the last interaction, he had mentioned about uh, his, his apprehensions about this becoming a tool for active intervention. I would like to say, please go to the first one, that the moment you think of poverty, you think of multidimensionality. And I first thought that comes to my mind is that of Kabir who said, Sign itna dijiye jame kutum samai. Kutum means what? Not household which lives together. It can be people can be living outside, your father, your relatives. Maybe bhuka na rahu. My biological needs should be satisfied. And what would be the needs? Again, there is a basket there. Sadhu na bhuka jai. If somebody guest is coming around, even that should be catered to. So that really means that poverty has to accommodate large number of concerns. Now, when the debate started on poverty to make it an active tool of intervention in the 60s, I recall I was at Gokhale Institute, Dandekar was made the chairman to find out the linkage between consumption expenditure and calories or some kind of a nutritional factor so that poverty debate has a solid basis. Because when you want to carry it into policy domain, there should be less of controversy and Dandeka, and of course he was joined by Lakadawala, Dantawala, they all felt that it should be possible to give a clear cut basis to the poverty measurement issues if we link it up with some nutritional factor. Now, I joined, when I joined JNU in the early 70s, I attended a high powered meeting as an observer where Dandeka and, uh, you know, uh, Minhas, all 
the stalwarts were there, but I could clearly see that although the basic attempt was made to really ground the poverty debate and link it up with some kind of a nutritional factor on there, there is not much of a disagreement. There were disagreements coming up. So Khatme, for example, clearly said that, look, one does not need 2,100 units of calories for the urban areas, 2,400 in the rural areas, as was given by the Alag committee subsequently. And even Lakarwala committee in 1993 did endorse this linkage and gave this calorie calculation. There were dissenting voices coming from Sukhatme. Sukhatme clearly said it could be less than that. And he also gave a note of dissent in the government report saying that instead of trying to push down calories and proteins, the throat of the poor people, you should improve what supply sanitation facilities so that retention of the calories, retention of the proteins become much more because, because of dysentery and waterborne diseases, the provision of simple calories or protein or nutrition is not enough. So that was the kind of beginning uh, of the dissent. But I think Tendulkar committee was a formal statement that delinking has to be done. Please go to the next one. Please. The task force in 1979 constituted as a planning commission. Why Alag was the chairman. He talked about definite calorie poverty line linkages. Task force recommended that people consuming less than 2,100 calories in urban areas and 2,400 in the rural areas are poor. And of course, calories plus the associated basket of food and non-food items. Please go to the next one. Then, uh, in fact, Sukhatne talked about lesser calories and started in the kitchen, you know, saying that we'll get 1800 calories and show that those who take only 1800 calories are healthier. Now, now, of course, Rajasthan government tried to take that policy. But nonetheless, Sukhatma was the person who said that calories cannot be definitely determined and it can be certainly, it should not be as high as that. And then comes um, our Minhas's, you know, path breaking work where he said that there is, please next one, this was the work that he did for the World Bank on estimating inadequacy of energy intakes. And he said that, well, energy intakes adequacy depends on not just the biological factors. It depends on social and cultural factors. And that paper, which was published in the Journal of Development Studies, got the best article award. Basically, he was arguing that let there be, you know, no attempt to link up calories or any nutrition with the uh, you know, consumption expenditure because that cannot be worked out. And uh, well, I remember in that same seminar, Lakarwala stood up and talk, told Minhas that Bhagij, the whole poverty debate has the punch. Poverty has a role in policy interventions because of the linkage. Please do not take away that peg on which the whole poverty discussion hangs, linking with nutrition. Please don't do that, then this will not have the policy implication. It will not be taken seriously. But nonetheless, Tendulkar clearly says that beside this calorie linkage being, the, you know, the, please go to the next one. The argument given is that we must move away from anchoring poverty line to a calorie intake norm in view of the fact that calorie consumption calculated by converting the consumed quantities in the last 30 days has been found to be not correlated with nutritional outcome. So basically nutritional outcomes are uh, very important. So that's what takes us to the, you know, the multidimensional poverty. Uh, but what he said, I thought very interesting. He said that 28.3% poverty in the rural areas has been perceived to be low. He didn't say why. There has been a lot of criticism. So let us get out of it. And 25.7% in the urban areas is less controversial. So basically, he was responding to the controversy that came up on the basis of the macroeconomic aggregates. And that is why I was just thinking, when in recent you know, months, when their figures came out of zero poverty on the basis of you know, very elegant calculation, and also of 10% poverty, there was a general dissatisfaction. And you know, on the basis of what you perceive around or some macro statistics, they were just feeling that, no, that is rather too optimistic. So I'm, I'm just saying that poverty is not just a matter of methodological calculation, but also it's a matter of 
you know, things being consistent with what you see around or what the other macro statistics show. I'm just saying that that was the kind of response that Tendulkar committee gave. Please go to the next one. Quickly. The global, I just say that this is the ground for the multidimensional poverty and was really very happy when Surjit, who had already raised the new poverty debate in India by calculating poverty on the basis of the synthetic uh, consumption uh, distribution on the, by using 2011-12 as a basis and by making adjustments uh, for the rural and urban areas, assuming the distribution within each state to be similar over time because there is not much of a change. Uh, but after that, I thought there was generally a large section of the people felt that this is too optimistic. And I was really, very really happy to see Surjit's paper coming in Indian Express, where he used the data for multidimensional poverty, basically based on NFHS data, National Family Health Survey data, which was published before three, four months in the, uh, by the global uh, UNDP and Oxford together. And that gave the figure. And that raised the controversy. I have a feeling there are some methodological misunderstanding as far as uh, you know, global poverty report is concerned that clearly shows, and that was also what Sujit was emphasizing. But I think large part of the figure that she was using was from the global poverty report, which clearly showed that the decline, annual decline in the poverty, headcount poverty, is certainly faster during the period from 2011 12 or 2014 15 to 2021, including the period of the COVID. Now, I'll just quickly go over. Uh, I'll take five minutes to just explain the methodology. Uh, Charan, is that all right? And then five minutes to say, how do we go forward? So as far as the global multidimensional poverty is concerned, please go to the next one. And I'm talking about arithmetics of multidimensional poverty. There is not much of statistics or not much of, not of mathematics in it. It is a simple calculation on the basis of individual level data. It requires household level survey, it requires information on individual levels. There are three dimensions that have been identified for multidimensional poverty and each dimension get equal weightages. In all, there are 10 indicators and five for the, uh, the level of living infrastructure and level of living two for health, three for education. In fact, uh, the number change from one country to another. And uh, for example, India and Lebanon, I'm talking about Lebanon because I was advising the multidimensional poverty report in uh, Lebanon being based in Beirut. We also used 12 indicators, whereas Indian uh, Niti Aayog, which has brought out the baseline report, they have taken roughly the 10 indicators recommended in the global report. But you know, the global report does not specify the numerator and denominator. You can always choose your numerator and denominator on the basis of the context. So you can't say that the 10 indicators that have been taken by Niti Aayog are exactly the same that have been taken in Lebanon or other countries. Now, demographic, the data sources, demographic and health survey, which are available you know, for 90 countries in the world, we, in some countries, in many of the Arab countries, we didn't have that. Uh, but in India, we have the National Family Health Survey, which is really in line with the demographic and health survey. So there is not much a problem of, uh, you know, a database. There are clusters in some countries where the demographic and health survey data are not available. They are using other sources of the data, Arab Family Health Project we used in uh, Lebanon. We go to the next one, slide. The different, how it is de derived, deprivation is measured at the household level. You must realize this, that's not at the individual level. For example, if the indicator, indicator is no member of the family who is above 10 years had education up to six years. If you find a household where no member who is above the age of 10 years didn't have six years of education, then the entire household is considered to be poor, not the uh, person concerned. So in that, similarly, any household where there is a death of in certain age, 
the entire household is considered deprived. So measurement of multidimensional poverty begins at the household level. So there are 10 indicators. If a household is deprived in one indicator, its deprivation score is equal to the weight assigned to the letter. What I'm saying is that 10 indicators do not carry equal weightages. You know, the health dimension has three indicators in India. So each one of them, each dimension has one third weightage. And within that, the, if there are three indicators, the weightage is distributed among these three. For example, in quality of life or infrastructure, there are five indicators, but the total weightage is one third. So each indicator then gets 115 so that the total weightage given to education, health and quality of life remains the same. Now a household, when do we consider a household to be poor? Now you have given weightage to all, a household, you have 10 indicators, do you know whether it is deprived? If it is deprived, then if the indicator has got 115th weightage, the household gets 115. So you add it up, the deprivation points on 10 indicators for each household. And if the total deprivation is less than one third, 33%, then that household is considered to be poor. If a household is poor in two or three dimensions, but the total deprivation of the household, adding up all the 10 indicators, is not more than one point, you know, point three three or one third. Then the household is not considered to be poor, and that is the logic of multi-dimensional poverty report. And it talks about censoring. Censoring does not mean trying to hide something, but the methodology. This was an issue of debate between Surjit and John raised. Why are you censoring? The methodology at the global level requires tells you that a household should not be considered to be poor just because it is poor in one indicator, but the total deprivation should be more than one third. And then only the household should be considered deprived. And when a household is considered deprived, all the members of the household should be considered deprived. So poverty headcount, how it is calculated, there is some problem in the Niti Aayog's understanding. I have pointed it out, but that's something that I can communicate to them in the next revised report. They should bring it out. Poverty headcount is the proportion of the total population which lives in poor households. You do not identify poor persons individually. You identify the households and add up the number of persons in those households, divide by the total population. Then you get the percentage. Please go to the next one. Please. Now, there is something called intensity of poverty. In the discussion between uh, Sujit and John Reed, I found that this was not mentioned, although I'm sure both of them must be aware. You don't only take the, uh, you know, the total uh, number of persons who are multidimensionally poor or the percentage of people who are multidimensionally poor. I'm sorry, the methodology is a bit boring, but it's just the arithmetic of it. What they do, the Global Poverty Report, all the poor people, you add up their, you know, their deprivations. Intensity of poverty is that some household may be poor, but the figure is, let's say, 0 0.50, because upper limit is 1. Some household has got only poverty of 0.2. So add it up and divide by the number of poor, and that gives you the intensity of poverty. You remember Amartya Sen, when he talked about people being below poverty line, he said, how much below poverty line? This is the same thing. You find out intensity of poverty by finding out that, okay, <coughs> poverty cutoff point is 33, but you add up their individual poverty deprivations, and that gives you the intensity of poverty and multidimensional poverty index is total headcount multiplied by the intensity of poverty. And that is what is clearly shown to be declining faster during the period from 2014-15 to 2021. Please go to the next one. Now, steps in the calculation, I'll quickly go over. I don't have to go generate individual profile in the deprivation status. Household survey should give individual level data 
generate deprivation scores for each household, not for each individual. Find out whether the household is deprived, and if the household is deprived in the first indicator, first indicator, depending if it is having weightage of one third, because total weightage is one. So it is distributed among 10 indicators. So if the household is deprived in the first indicator, it gets one, you know, one ninth, because the weightage of the first indicator is something like that. Second, what you do, identify the poor household by applying the cutoff point of 33. That is the sensory that you only identify those households as really poor, which gets a score of 33.3. Then this is censoring exclusion of household below cutoff deprivation are excluded. But if you want to have uncensored, you can consider all the households, even if they report deprivation in one indicator, you can consider that household. But that's a matter of your decision that whether you take, want to take uncensored or censored. Now, computing the intensity of poverty is headcount ratio multiplied by the, uh, the depth of poverty or intensity of poverty. Please go to the next one. Now, this is the list of the global poverty report, years of schooling, school attendance. This is for education. The weightage, sorry, weightage given is written here one sixth because, you know, there are two indicators for education. If you add these two, one sixth, one sixth, it becomes one third. In health, there are three indicators and they are getting one ninth, one ninth, one ninth. If you add the three, this becomes three ninth, three upon nine, which is again one third. And living standards, each one is getting 121. And there are, how many indicators are there? Just go to the next one. Seven indicators. I think again they add up uh, uh, to one third. And you see, the uh, I have just given it for uh, Lebanon because we there wanted to find out acute poverty and poverty. Acute poverty has a much stronger, you know, cutoff point, and certainly that works out to be much lower than poverty in the Arab context. Acute poverty was something like 15%. But we also, there also we modified the 10 indicators in terms of numerator and denominator. To say that a country is following exactly the global methodology is not correct because sometimes some numerator and denominators are not available. But roughly these 10 indicators were used in the report, Arab poverty report that we prepared before two years. But in addition, we had Two more indicators, like in India, Niti added two indicators. I will talk about them. So one was congestion factor. That was a major problem in the cities. So, in Amita, so, sorry to interrupt, but it's five o'clock now. Okay, so I'll just give you two minutes. Wind yeah. up in five minutes. Okay, I'll, I'll do that. Give us ten so, minutes before. So yeah. what what we do here? We just had two indicators. One was congestion, and other is FGM. That is female genital mutilation. And uh, there was a huge debate. Many of the Arab countries stalwarts said that this is a cultural thing. You cannot consider to be poverty, but nonetheless, we succeeded and we have included that. So this is the global thing. Please go to the next one. This is the uh, data that I was talking about. This is straight from the global report. The uh, years are given here on the extreme left and the multi-dimensional poverty, which is headcount multiplied by intensity of poverty is also given here. You can clearly see that the decline during 2015, 16 to 2021 is much sharper annually. And similarly, headcount ratio also has gone down sharply during the second period than the first period. Please go to the next one. Go to the next one, please. Now, a special section in the global report highlights that over 15 years, India the number of poor has dropped by 415 million. The global multidimensional poverty report praises India for massive poverty reduction, multidimensional poverty reduction. Please go to the next one. This is Indian multidimensional poverty report. I just wanted to mention two or three things and then I will conclude. Just go to the next one. All the global input were generally accepted by choosing appropriate numerator and denominator it is up to them. But in India, we have added two more indicators, antenatal care and bank account. Now, there was discussion, you know, in 
Arab countries or any country, whenever you add new indicators, there can be a local short-term politics in that. And that is what the global report says to minimize that as much as possible. Keep the 10 standard indicators, three dimensions, but any new indicator that you are adding, you must see to it that there is no immediate interest of any group or any government to benefit. And there has been questions about bank account being in given same status as housing or access to drinking water and sanitation because there has been a massive opening of the bank account, uh, you know, under Jandhan scheme, which doesn't have any money. Antenatal scale also portion could have inflated. But again, these are political decisions. And this is something that we have to be very careful when you're choosing the indicator. Go to the next one. Now, what I noted that there is some basic misunderstanding in the Niti Aayog report. It talks about set the deprivation cutoff on for, for each indicator sufficient in order for an individual. This is not correct. You are identifying poverty and deprived household at the household uh, deprived as a household level, not at the individual level. Individual, you are get, uh, calculating after you have identified the, uh, you know, uh, poor households and add up the number of persons in these households. Go to the next one. And the next one, you see, basically they're talking about individual. I pointed it out, it is not individual. This is the list of the indicators that Niti has used. And you can clearly see that in health, this third, uh, from top, the third antenatal care has been included and some people have said that this would really exaggerate the performance um, of the government because in ordinary care there has been some steps taken but the outcome of that is not to be seen and the last one is bank account again as i am saying that the inclusion of a new indicator or choice of even the indicator is the same as 10 which numerator you use which source you use it certainly that's a that's a major issue we go to the next one I just want to raise two points. You see the multidimensional composite index, geographers and social sciences have been calculating from 30s onwards. I know Center for Regional uh, Development, they, all the geographers have been calculating by taking a large number of indicators, combining them through principal component analysis for various you know, methodologies have evolved, but economists were not really getting in front. And my doctoral thesis, I started by you know, Pareto um, thesis, uh, Amartya Sen talks about it. You cannot have a composite ranking for individual ranking. Collective ranking from individual ranking is impossible. This is the impossibility theorem. So I started with that, but Amartya Sen himself says that economists are frozen into inaction because of such strong value judgment. You have to get out of it. And therefore, he suggested that, yes, I will join the human development uh, report measurement where we combine three apparently unconnected things and that's what has been done and i think it's an important step i would suggest that given the problems with the consumption expenditure data being different from the nas data there are problems in reporting weekly reporting or monthly reporting there are problems there are problems that have been talked in the paper by mock and sullivan that there is a household missing individual items not being reported properly and all the kind of calculations that are going into simulation of the distribution. Instead of that, is it more safe to use the outcome indicators on health, education, and infrastructure? Can we measure them? Can we measure them in a more you know, objective and robust manner? Is this shift desirable? And what kind of thinking needs to go into this shift to from the consumption, expenditure, or income to outcome indicators? That is a big challenge. For the country and for the planners. So, Rajit, I stop here. Okay. Thank you very, very yeah. much, Amitabh. Um, almost perfectly on time. You've covered a lot of ground, um, and I would have really enjoyed um, to discuss uh, this important paper. Um, but let me <clears throat> uh, just make some uh, summary comments. Um, the first on the big result. Sai Dunya Ghum Gumake Jase Shu Kiyada Wahi Pochane. So I am not while I've used um the multidimensional poverty index, um I'm not a fan of it at all. You pointed out some of the uh reasons why one shouldn't be a fan. I realize that you end up 
in favor of that. But I think um, I've yet to see um, a reasonable analysis of the multidimensional poverty index as to why, how is it different than the Occam's razor um, analysis of the poverty line. Now, you know, you want a particular uh, one factor um, about the measurement of the um, poverty line uh, result is that, as we know, that in India, um, and just the recall period in 2011-12 as to how long, you know, what is your estimate of vegetable and fruits consumption over the last week? Um, just the recall period made a difference half. Practically, the estimate from them. I think, you know, this is what the multidimensional poverty index uh, is. I don't remember. I, I've used it. But, you know, I in our paper, uh, which you graciously cited, you know, you can get pretty much your same results as with a 3.2 poverty line, which is what we had suggested. So, you know, I, it's a, um, it's a mugs game, and it's very interesting. Uh, one, as to the degree of politics and ideology that is involved in the poverty estimates. You yourself pointed out um, how, you know, and we are there, we are in complete agreement, how in the world did senior scholars at the World Bank and elsewhere came to the conclusion that the poverty decline in India has at the same rate as it was earlier. Um, you very emphatically, and I think correctly show, with the use of uh, the multi-demography, that's just not even close to the truth. But yet we have uh, various forms of hand-waving and people coming up, uh, poverty decline is the same. Uh, you know, that tells you the ideology that is involved uh, by researchers. And I, I guess, you know, there is no way you can get out of the ideology. One other interesting point you pointed out about Kabir. Uh, Fantastic quote, I'll use it sometime, but you know, it tells us how little we have progressed um, in terms of our thinking about poverty, that we are still thinking in terms of food consumption or multidimensional poverty or this, that, or whatever. Look, there is just, you know, um, I don't think this kind of a debate occurs in any other poor country, uh, including China. And sometime we should devote what is it um, about the argumentative Indian that they are obsessed with showing that poverty is very big and the rich are getting richer, the poor are getting poor. You've heard the whole shebang. And, you know, we need to do, study that a little bit as to why and how that has come about. Now, Social and cultural factors, you pointed out with uh, Minas. Now, you know, that doesn't help, quite honestly, um, because every country has social and cultural factors, etc. So the reason why the Occam's Razor simple poverty line uh, was developed and widely accepted is it completely ignores the social and cultural factors. And I don't think social and cultural factors have, they must have, they have a lot to do with the politics of poverty, but not with the measurement of poverty. Uh, you correctly pointed out on this um, House of Khatme took on the calorie wellness, and that was, I think, back in the 70s. And it didn't stop people from uh, continuing with that. You know, my favorite example for anybody who wants to use uh, malnutrition and poverty via calories 
is that in, nine, in the 1973-74, there was a Haynes nutrition survey, very, very detailed for the U.S. Okay, 70 doesn't have to do with India, poor countries, it had to do with the U.S. And very detailed measurement of nutrition. Uh, they looked at how much hamburger lost uh, when you made a hamburger, or how much oil it lost, and therefore calories it lost, etc. And the conclusion there was that according to the FAO, uh, another political organization, according to the FAO index, 85% of women in the U.S. were malnourished. And I pointed out a, a simple thing that, you know, casual observation would suggest that for the U.S. at that time, and I was in the U.S. at that time, was that if anything, obesity was a problem, not malnourishment. Uh, maybe now not the right nourishment, but they were getting a lot of calories. Okay, and even that was below the nutritional standard. I mean, this thing is, you know, I remember looking at BMI, bio, biomedical index, EAMO. So I think that's a, another interesting historical point on the Tendulka, uh, that uh, poverty line, well accepted. We all know we were both on the same committee with him. But the Tendulka poverty line for 2011-12, they did some really funny business um, of looking at relative poverty lines between states, between urban, rural, not straightforward price lines, and such that the what in 2009-10, the poverty line was equal to $1.9 a day. In um, by the time the Tendulka poverty line came up, it was two thousand, it was two point zero three dollars a day and which automatically gave you a higher poverty number so i think look all I, poverty is an important policy problem i believe uh, or policy, uh i believe that poverty lines uh should be uh, should move upwards in real terms and we can actually calculate how much they moved upwards or how much they should move upwards by looking at historical data for various countries. Um, I think that's the procedure to do. I, I think the emphasis should be on correct measurement. Uh, you'll never reach perfection, but it should be measurement. And the moment we start coming around with new poverty lines, and you know, and you very rightly pointed out, acha iska weight ye hona chahiye, uska weight ye hona chahiye, yahan teen cheeze hain, wahan che cheeze hain. This is a mugs game. Um, and we should try and get away. So my future work, I will show that, uh, you know, uh, I've used it uh, because there wasn't, as you know, the big controversy about data not being available, uh, the consumer expenditure survey. So as good economists have data, we'll analyze, but doesn't mean that, at least from my vantage point, that I agree with the multidimensional poverty index. Um, so I think, on that very optimistic note, unfortunately, I have to leave, but this is a very important set of results that you've reached, and we'll have to maybe uh, at some other time look at the political economy of poverty lines rather than a measurement of poverty. So I, I have to go. Um, since, Chavan, you obviously not found out whether the flight is delayed. No, the flight is on time. I found that. Oh. That, that, I got to go. I got to go. Thank can you, guys. Can I ask you one question, no. Sajid? Thank you. Can I ask you one question, Sajid? I think he will miss his flight. The flight is at 7. Okay, then, 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 we, then we forget. But, but we will I, I write to him. We'll write to him or you can put us... Just, 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 just half a minute. Half a minute. You know, I want to say that as a part of the Arab poverty group, we had to fight a lot to include an indicator and they were insisting or dropping some indicator. You'd think it is possible in the developing countries to be objective about the indicators, not be influenced by the present regime, 
decide about the weightages in an objective manner? That is my question because I have, we have debated the weightages and the choice of indicator, which will determine. And this is what Arvind Verbali was also talking the other day. I am just wanting whether you would think it is a feasible thing as a roadmap for India that multidimensional poverty becomes a tool of effective intervention in policy domain. All right, I'll convey this to him on the WhatsApp. Okay. If he wants to sit in the car and then join us audio, uh, it's his choice. Uh, but Professor, you know, I'm not a poverty expert as you and Bhalla and Birmani are, but I did read the Kabir Doha, which you read, which you said, and I have been taught by Professor Nanak Kakwani and uh, Poder at UNSW, Sydney. Yeah, so I, I know him. I am aware of his work on poverty. Yes, both. I'm sure you are aware of both of them were very well published, Nanak Kakwani and uh, Poder. And here is the Doha, which says, mm -hmm. right? right? Now, <laughs> of course, you interpreted it as my bio needs are met. I would have interpreted it my hunger. Uh, is met and you interpret sadhu bhi bhukha na jai. you interpreted it as any guest who may even demand vodka or champagne and I would have interpreted it only as somebody who needs basic needs a sadhu. So, so how do you define poverty? And while I was doing my PhD, I realized in India, we believe in the poverty line, which is the bare minimum uh, calorie intake. Whereas Nanak Akwani did a study in New York City in 1993, I think, where he dis determined the poverty line, which also included some entertainment, a movie a week, a bottle of beer a day, and a sumptuous lunch and all the three. Now, that is the time when I was wondering in my country how I define poverty and in this country, how they define poverty. So I was really thrilled when you read that Doha of Kabir, maybe Bhukha Narahum, and I meant only my food corporation of India and fair price shop giving me rice, wheat and dal. Maybe they should start serving beer. And, uh, and Sadhu Bhukha Nare, means all my guests who comes and visits my Juki, also gets a beer to drink. How do you interpret that? So I, my own limited understanding, uh, right at the outset said that I'm not a poverty expert is that um, this is a complex issue. And I'm thankful to you for having presented it and made us all think. And of course, we have all read uh, Bhalla Virmani and uh, Basim paper and we have also been following, thanks to you, John Dree's work. So that was my basic uh, observation. Now let me come down and uh, see questions from the audience. We have exactly 10 minutes. I'm going to request if anybody has a question, please raise your hand. Be very focused so that we can get the best out of Professor Kundu. And then also know that next week onwards, we have 10 series of webinars on task force five. Next one is on quota. And these are part of G20 exercise where EGRO is participating in that initiative. So let me go to Dr. Ashok Vishindas first. And if you have questions, welcome to raise your hand or put it in the chat box. Dr. Vishindas, please. You have to unmute yourself. Dr. Vishindas, you have to unmute. Yeah, uh, yes. sorry. Uh, thank you, Professor Charan, and thank you, the Chair, Professor uh, Bhalla, and thank you, Professor Amitabh. Uh, I'm your great admirer. I had listened to you uh, in the past, and you are always on the top, masterful exposition. I, I just wanted two things uh, to know, uh, because uh, it, the global multidimensional poverty, they have 10 indicators, but India has two more, antenatal care and bank account. For whatever be the region for inclusion or two more indicator, 
uh, how we can compare if if that that is uh, that need arises that is question one and what is what is the latest uh, poverty level uh, on multi dimensional and and the head count ratio is is anything done after after tendulkar and uh, uh, see the current uh, current level of poverty is uh, with reference to which year that i want to be uh, uh, educated on that over to before, professor Amit. before professor kundu you respond let us collect a few questions let me read two questions which are in the chat box then i will go to professor rekha the chat box says how to calculate the bank account as an indicator of dimensional index is it real I think so. The prime, the prime minister Jan Dhan Yojana, the account opening is higher, but the account is becoming zero. Something have money in account. How to see this, sir? And the second question is from Balaji, who says how human capital efficiency can be related with multi-dimensional poverty. Now over to Dr. Rekha Jagannath. Please be brief and focused, Professor Jagannath. Yeah. Uh Sir, I feel that uh, this kind of a topic is very important at present because uh, we have to give more importance to distribution given the growth rates falling and expectation of growth rates falling further uh, in the coming decades. Not only that, uh, eGrow Foundation itself has its namesake welfare where poverty uh, is a very important aspect due to which this topic should be carried on for many more webinars. That is one comment. But then uh, maybe it needs seven or eight lectures like this. It was a stupendous task for Professor Kundu to cover multidimensional poverty within the time limit. And he really uh, exercised, managed the concepts within the huge uh, topic given. Here, uh, I find that gender empowerment matrix could have been uh, covered better. Uh, considering that there are many students over here, uh, it would be helpful if we had covered a gender empowerment matrix, which includes uh, economic participation of women, political participation of women, uh, capacity for decision-making power, and then capacity to achieve their aims, uh, that is among women, which is included under gender empowerment matrix, which could have been given a better mention. Uh, I understand that uh, it was because of the time limit. And uh, there was also happiness index, which is very much uh, uh, in vogue now in SDSN network. It's been extensively given importance, uh, given the importance of mental health. Physical health is considered uh, in human development index, uh, giving consideration to life expectancy at birth and then uh, to also the number of uh, years of schooling, mental health is given a slight importance, but then uh, coming to happiness, you give importance to charity and then generosity, social support during difficulties, which are all not considered here. We also have intellectual poverty uh, within which comes years of schooling, which makes a very poor uh, indicator of intellectual poverty. Uh, I hope uh, Professor Kundu will enlighten uh, the students and academics over here, including me, uh, how this could be briefly covered. But I Thank request you. Professor Charan Singh again to have many more webinars on this topic. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Rekha. Professor Kundu, you have four minutes as you could bring the ocean into the... Anjani Kumar Tripathi raising his hand. Can we have quick questions from him? Just a minute. Sure. 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 Okay. Tripathi ji, yes. I think you wanted to say, ask something. I saw your hand going up. The gender empowerment matrix uh, constituents, if you could be like. Uh, Dr. Korean. Yes. Dr. Oh, yeah. Sorry, your name was wrongly shown. So I. <laughs> I have two pointed questions. First of all, thank you for this very useful uh, webinar. The first question is, if you go to the Trist with Destiny speech of Jawaharlal Nehru on 1947 August, we find multi-dimensions of poverty there. 
and whatever the uh, methodologies we adopt and we if we, you you referred it to the socio cultural factors if we go to the current situation uh, uh, I, I, do we have some sort of a an outliers from a poverty point of view in indian society what may be your point of view on that that is my first question the second question is very simple we students of economics are exposed to wide diverse diverse uh, data on poverty both internationally as well as nationally as students of as researchers potential researchers what data you may suggest for research from the re reliability point of view thank you again for your excellent presentation thank you so dr sen yeah the floor Why? is yours and you have two minutes okay thank you now it's uh, still not 5:30 so it is too early to talk about vodka and beer but i am not an authority on uh, you know kabir but what i understand he says jame kutumb samaj kutumb is not the household which lives with you you have a social responsibility because of you know your family relations you your parents even today your parents may not be living with you and if you calculate poverty on the basis of the household members living there which we generally do it would be erroneous so i think I, what i infer from that is that you should not calculate poverty or you know decent living on the basis of only the members who are with you similarly i would agree that bhuka certainly does not mean you know lavish entertainment but certainly meeting you can't have just calories i remember dandekar was almost shouting at sukhatme when he said that people can live very happily and healthily with 1400 calories he said i'm not talking about saints like you you can live with 1000 calories we're talking about the average person so i think you cannot link bhuka na rahu only with the minimum calorie or biology there are certain needs of you know the minimum needs for survival associated with the food they have to be included and finally sadhu na bhuka jaye really does not mean your gets from new york sadhu na bhuka jaye to my mind would be the needy around you and menhas did tackle this issue in the famous paper which got the best award in you know 1992 of the journal for the whole decade what menhas did was to find out that many households are net receivers of food for example domestic help in a month's time how many meals did you receive from others and how many meals did you give to others so they found that the richer in the study it shows that the this is nss questionnaire the people who are having 2400 2600 calories they are net givers that means they give food to the domestic help or people around whereas those who are below 2000 are net receivers so what menha said that instead of trying to find out what calorie is the requirement 2100 2400 he said find out that level of calorie where people become net givers from net receivers that is where the adequacy comes in as far as the household is concerned you should take the households which are at that margin neither receiving nor giving that is that enough they are saying that enough food we have so that should be the level as that has been mentioned now as far as the gender issue is concerned i entirely agree that we need to bring in much more significantly gender dimension into our multi level poverty by by the way when we talk about the different indicators like any child dying generally the female mortality rate is very high so gender dimension is already built into it when you say people did not have education for 6 years you generally find that the girls don't take education for 6 years so again gender dimension is built in and there are specific indicators for example female literacy we have taken and it is mentioned at the global report early pregnancy we have taken in the arab poverty report which can be taken here also because you know i was advising there we found that early pregnancy is a problem which is health affecting the health of the girl 
you know, they become pregnant at the age of 16, 17. So we included that. Even female, female genital mutilation, you know, they were protest against it. But there is a problem. Uh, Dr. Singh, Dr. Singh, you know, the international agencies do not want to intervene with the cultural practices. So when the Arab countries protested and said that, sorry, female genital mutilation is a cultural thing. It is not reflecting deprivation of women. We had to fight a lot. Similarly, you know, UN position takes a position that do not disturb the cultural practices and give them a negative attitude. This has to change. I have a feeling that there is a lot of education which is required. And the Indian context, as Dr. Charan Singh rightly mentioned, there have been debate about the two indicators. One is the banking. You give the bank account the same weightage as having drinking water and sanitation and nutrition. That seems to be certainly, you know, reducing the, uh, you know, poverty's content. And similarly, portion is a program which has been included related to that in health, but the outcome has yet not come. So putting the input factor into the basket may really show lower value. So what we have argued, uh, the global report also argues that in order to save the multidimensional poverty from short term political considerations of an existing regime, you should try to subject this, you know, the uh, choice of indicators to a larger debate. And you should not allow every, you know, new government comes in, he says, let us push this indicator. So that would certainly then become a political tool. And that's what I was asking Professor Sujit Bhalla, whether it is, it is possible to really keep the multidimensional poverty out of the short term politics and vested interest of the pressure groups. And uh, well, I, I, I must say that the calorie fundamentalism has been questioned by Angus Deaton said calorie is not, you know, if you have enough calorie, it can be because of you know, um, bad uh, health could be because of e excess calories or bad uh, food, food dietary habits. And that's why when NFHS is reporting, you know, anemia among adults, pregnant women, that could be because of the bad dietary habits. So one has to be very, very careful. So uh, my submission is that just move shifting from calories, income to, uh, you know, multidimensional poverty is not that easy. As Surjit Bhalla's and Birmani's paper points out, that, you know, individual consumption expenditure depends on how much state is providing. If the state is giving you free food, if state is giving free, free electricity or free gas, then your personal expenditure may go down. So obviously, the consumption expenditure has this problem. It has to factor in the role of the state. And the moment Surjit's paper brings in the state in provision of the food, poverty becomes less. So one has to, that. therefore, outcome indicators are much more preferable. Otherwise, you have to factor in the state in a much bigger way. So I have a feeling that generally there is an agreement that multidimensional poverty, measuring poverty directly through outcome indicators is desirable provided there is some kind of a robustness in the procedure through which the indicators are selected. And we have argued in our report that unless the procedure is protected from political influence, you can always have a change in the denominator, numerator, you have, can have a change in the source, you take the one source, you get a, a you know, higher value. So all that protection have to be designed before we can consider using multidimensional poverty as an input in resource allocation in programmatic you know, interventions under different schemes. I must thank you, Professor Kundu uh, and the participants for enriching this discussion. I'll be conveying your question to Professor, uh, to Dr. Bhalla also. Uh, we will have this intense discussion and very educative, informative discussion on our web, web, website tomorrow by noon. Uh, I'm sure all of us are going to use it extensively in our classrooms and other under, even, even in trying to understand the dimensions of multidimensional poverty, which Professor Kundu, the expert that he is, has explained to us so clearly threadbare. And Dr. Well, Korean well, rightly pointed out about the database issue. You know, what data sources, should, that's a very, very important area that have to be uh, investigated. Yes.
So I would thank, uh, thank I would thank the participants. Okay. I would thank Professor Kudu, and uh, then I have important announcement to make. From next week, next ten weeks, we are dedicating to G20 Task Force Five. We are going to be talking issues like quota reforms, debt sustainability, climate and finance, monetary policy, um, things like digital currency. Uh, 10 weeks totally dedicated to task force 5 of G20. I would request each one of you to please come and participate. And I think it's a great honor for India that we have the presidency this year. And this will be an opportunity for scholars like all of you to participate in the G20 discussions and the task force 5. The consolidated report will be out sometimes in August, September. That is why we have front loaded the webinar starting from March, which will end by May. And those inputs which you will be providing uh, obviously will be found useful by the task force conveners and the G20. That's how we can contribute in the richness of the G20 report uh, under the presidency of India. So once again, thanks a lot for your participation today and looking forward to your continuous support and enriching the discussions with your questions in the next 10 Fridays at least. Uh, there'll be lots of international audience because the issues that we are going to cover under Task Force 5 are international in nature. The panelists will be, many of them will be, at least half of them will be with the international background or from other countries. You will have a chance to contribute, also to learn from them. So with this, let me conclude today and thank each one of you and invite you for the next 10 sessions uh, starting Friday, March 3. Thank you.